a pig-like family of monsters known as entelodonts, appeared on Earth long after the dinosaurs but before humans did. Due to their demonic demeanor, they are now more commonly referred to as hell pigs or terminator pigs. For millions of years, beginning in the Eocene and continuing into the Miocene, they terrorized the northern hemisphere of Earth. Each and every one of them was dreadful. One of them, though, stood out even among the rest. It wasn't until much later that the Diodons and Teledont status was acknowledged. The original Diodon creator claimed the creature was merely a parasodactyla closely related to Megasaurops and left it at that. It was not until the early 1900s that its true identity as an Entelodont was revealed, despite the fact that this misconception had persisted for decades. However, the classification mess was far from over. There will eventually be only one accepted species within this genus, despite the fact that many more will be proposed over time. Similarly, other helpigs, such as the well-known Dino Hyas, would be reclassified as being synonymous with the Diodon. Fortunately, as paleontologists continue to piece together more information about this creature, it appears that the Diodon has settled into its Entelodont family. Despite its pig-like alias, the Diodon was actually more closely related to whales and hippos than to Megasaurops. The Diodon shared many characteristics with its relatives, including a similar general appearance, but its massive size set it apart from the rest of the Hellpig family. As adults, they could reach a height of 1.77 meters 5.8 feet at the shoulders and a length of over 9 feet 2.7 meters, making them enormous compared to other Hellpigs. Only the Entelodont, of which only fragmentary information is available, appears to have been comparable in size. Diodon also has the largest known Entelodont skeleton, which has convinced many that it is, in fact, the largest member of its family at the present time. However, despite the availability of relatively complete skeletons, paleontologists are not so sure of their weight which they believe was rather substantial given that they would have been quite muscular and possess a titanic skull. The skulls of Entelodonts in general are large and robust, but the Diodon really took it to another level, measuring an astounding 3 feet 0.91 meters in length and constituting a significant portion of its body. In fact, the Diodon's head was so massive that it required a spinal hump to which the head's muscles and tendons were attached in order for the animal to move. Not only did it have a large head, but it also had large bone extensions, which are unique to helpigs. Some paleontologists hypothesize that these growths would have been missiled in the prehistoric world. Weir and tear patterns on his teeth show that he crushed straight through the bones of other animals while some researchers believe his horns and horn-like structures were merely for show. Regardless, the Diodon had an extremely powerful skull that allowed it to pack a killer bite. While the Diodon's penchant for gnawing on bones lends credence to the theory that it was at least partially carnivorous, it does little to settle the ongoing debate over whether or not it was primarily a scavenger. Some researchers believe that the Diodon's massive skull prevented it from successfully hunting live prey and forced it to instead rely on scavenging. Others, however, point to the Hellpig's bison-like running adaptations as proof that it was capable of hunting and chasing down prey if it so chose. Evidence from both Diodon and other Hellpigs suggests that they at least occasionally hunted live prey. Bite marks were discovered on a chalicotheia that were administered to body parts that are usually targeted for the purpose of killing a live animal. It has also been hypothesized that the Diodon, thanks to its massive size and powerful jaws, could steal the kill from other predators by scaring or fighting the predators off the carcass, which it would then devour. The Diodon's superior abilities and massive size allowed it to rise to the position of top predator in the ecosystems in which it lived. But even it couldn't trust easy because it had to keep an eye out for other Diodons. Bite marks on the faces of specimens were found to match the teeth of other Diodons, so it was long suspected that Diodons would use their hellish mouths on members of their own species. These bite marks were most likely the result of territorial disputes over food or mates. And because this ecosystem was so hungry, these kinds of injuries happened often and affected a lot of animals. 
the deodin ate everything, so its deadly mouth wasn't just for tearing into its prey's flesh. Some of his teeth, like his molars, are remarkably similar to those of modern omnivores. In addition, the tooth enamel patterns show that it also enjoyed eating nuts, roots, and vines in addition to meat and bones. This varied diet helped the deodon survive the dry periods that happened often in its ecosystem. It seems that the deodon also liked to eat grapevines during these dry times because they had a lot of water. The deodon was better than many other animals because it could change its diet to fit its needs. Its natural range included much of North America and its native prehistoric North America. The agate fossil beds, which correspond to modern-day Nebraska, are where deodons are most commonly discovered. For millions of years, the deodon roamed these vast grasslands, sharing them with animals as diverse as beavers, which are primarily terrestrial hunters, and small rhinoceroses, as well as gazelle-like camels, the giant moropists, and countless species of medium-sized bear dogs. Deodons rallied heavily on these tiny rhinos for sustenance because they were plentiful, simple to hunt, and an important part of the deodons' diets. The fact that thousands of these rhinos would perish every dry season because of the extreme weather conditions, yet so few deodon specimens have been discovered in the area, makes these sites particularly significant. Deodon can survive impacts, but it didn't need to because of its massive weapon. Studies of the deodon's habitat show that, despite being a top predator, the deodon ultimately perished as a result of its inability to adapt to a rapidly changing environment. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell icon for more interesting videos. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.